We begin with a Fox News alert. As you can see, there's a lot happening at the United Nations General Assembly right now. We're waiting to hear from the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who's set to speak before the United Nations General Assembly this hour. In fact, there's only one more speaker after this and then him. He's expected to forcefully refute what he is calling lies from the Palestinian leadership about Israel's war with Hamas that, as you know, lasted about 50 days this summer. We will bring you that speech live when it begins. This is Outnumbered. I'm Andrea Tanteros, and here with us today, Harris Faulkner, Jedediah Diabila, author and political commentator, Rachel Campos Duffy, and today's hashtag first timer, one lucky guy, Fox Business Network senior correspondent, Charlie Gasparino, and he is outnumbered. Uh, and crazy for being here. Well, you got a text. Someone said, are you lucky or are you crazy? And I said, when it comes to you, uh, Gasparino, those things uh, are not mutually exclusive. Sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm crazy. Just. Don't hit me above the uh, above the above. We don't above hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who prays with me? I then. promise not the same thing. Too crazy. Don't worry. This won't. <laughs> this won't hurt. Just hang on, Charlie. All right. A stunning admission from President Obama, who is now acknowledging the U.S. underestimated the rise of ISIS. Here he is on 60 Minutes. How did they end up? where they are in control of so much territory. Was that a complete surprise to you? Well, uh, I think uh, our head of uh, the intelligence community, uh, Jim Clapper, has acknowledged that I think they underestimated uh, what had been taking place in Syria. I mean, he, he didn't say that, just say that we underestimated ISIL. He said we overestimated the ability and the will of our allies, the Iraqi army, to fight. That's true. That's absolutely true. Now, the president also saying the U.S. made a mistake in placing too much trust in the Iraqi army. Now, remember, this is the same army we're counting to be our boots on the ground to defeat ISIS. Mr. Obama also didn't deny America's airstrikes in Syria are helping Bashar Assad. What do you think? Uh, who came up with the term uh, JV team? I, I mean, yeah. that, that's, I think that gets, that gets right to it. Uh, President Obama has uh, completely underestimated the threat of ISIS from the beginning. Uh, he, he Really fatuous statements about their ability to wreak, wreak havoc. And now he has to back up. And, you know, it seems like he's trying to pass the buck a little bit with this. A little bit? Some guy that, you know, no one's ever heard of is responsible for his massive screw-up. And I'll tell you, the problem with the president, I think, in this issue is... You you almost can't believe anything coming out of his mouth going forward. You do believe that he is completely unprepared or his ideological, he's so ideologically opposed to anything, any sort of military intervention that he'll just make stuff up to prevent us from going over there in a, in a meaningful way to stop them. And Rachel, we heard earlier from our own Catherine Harridge. She has cited numerous intelligence officials who warned about ISIS months ago and also Senator Dianne Feinstein in February uh, warning about ISIS. And how could he miss this one? ISIS took the cities of Ramadi and Fallujah. So the president doesn't remember that ISIS captured those cities? Exactly. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Remember Baghdad Bob in the Iraq war? It's sort of <laughs> like that. I mean, it's like the Ministry of Information. They're telling us things that we know are demonstrably false. Um, we know he knew for a year. And he's saying, actually, it's kind of like a fake apology, right? He goes, you know, America didn't know. No, you are the one who didn't know. You were told, and you've actually... Um, I actually think maybe he understands what's going on, and he just doesn't want to do it. It's not that he didn't know about it. And in some ways, he's saying, it's America's fault. America didn't know. What about the boots on the ground, uh, Jedediah? Because the president's talking about the Iraqi army saying we underestimated their ability to mm -hmm. fight. Did we really? Uh, Jim Garrity has an excellent uh, listing of all the people in the Bush administration, Cheney, Bush, uh, Ambassador Crocker to Iraq, saying that if we pull out, the army is not equipped to keep that country safe. So all the warnings were there. Now this is the same army that we're counting to defeat right. ISIS. Why are they better now than they were before? Exactly, and why didn't he know? I mean, was he, where was he? Was he not at the intelligence briefings? Why, why did we know that? Why were we reading all of those reports that they weren't prepared and somehow he wasn't getting the memo and now he's all of a sudden gonna pass it off as well, I didn't know? No, you don't get to do that. You're the president of the United States. If anyone's supposed to be on top of all this, it's you. Mm -hmm. And you know, the other things he says about, we just have to push them back and shrink their space. 
He's confusing the messaging again. Are we in there to destroy these guys? Or are we in there to push them back? Stop confusing the messaging and stop trying to pass the buck along to somebody else. You're the president. If anyone was supposed to be on top of this from day one, you were the guy that was supposed to be that person. And Harris, I mean, really, that is... I think the most important point coming out of this is the pronoun that he used. Instead of we, he said they underestimated. Again, throwing our intelligence community under the bus. They're not so happy, again, over there at the CIA who said, hey, wait a minute, we've been warning about this, President Obama. Don't put this on us. Yeah, you, you are doing exactly what I did as I was watching this. You know, and of course, the embargo was lifted last night at 7 p.m. Eastern, so we talked about this on Fox Report. And another line that stands out, just like that one word that you pulled out, is when he was asked, the president, whether we we're at war, he said, this is not America against ISIS. They're beheading Americans. That's right. They're yeah. killing Christians. That's right. Who the heck is it against ISIS mm -hmm. then? I mean, if we're going to lead the world, and he said, no, you know, and I, now I'm going to paraphrase him. We have a coalition of people. We've got da-da-da-da. Yeah, but it really is us, though, right, <laughs> against right. them. Well, he made it sound like we were just helping out a country in need, yeah. Iraq, as if it was a humanitarian effort, which is how it After started. After putting down their military. That's exactly I'm not, not, not going to defend him, but I'm going to just put a little bit devil's advocate here. I mean, the, the American people really don't want to get involved in another war. Now, I know the polls say, yeah, they would like more boots on the ground, but in some respects, when, no. when you start Only talking... after the that, airstrikes, you with that. Supposed Dollars to, do. to donuts, that, a lot of people are wary about... about that shows about how much they want to let's jump into that because that's next right. topic. Meantime, as Charlie just mentioned, most Americans are skeptical of President Obama's promise that no U.S. ground troops will be used to fight ISIS. That's according to a new poll. It finds 72 percent of Americans say U.S. ground troops will eventually be deployed in the fight against the extremists. But 45 percent of those polled say with, that they would support that. Now, this is how Speaker John Boehner says we may have no choice but to send troops in. At the end of the day, uh, I think it's going to take more than airstrikes uh, to drive them out of there. At some point, somebody's boots have to be on the ground. That's American. the whole point. And if no one else will step up, you would recommend putting American boots on the ground? We have no choice. These are barbarians. They intend to kill us. And if we don't destroy them first, we're going to pay the price. All right, wow. So, no <laughs> choice. Charlie, do you believe... President Obama, when he says that is not an option? Well, there are boots on the ground. I mean, special forces are over there. I mean, don't let, don't, there, there, are, there are American soldiers over there, at least in directing and maybe sometimes fighting. Um, I will say this. If ISIS is a major, major threat, which everybody here probably thinks and a lot of Americans think, you should go to the American people and basically do what Franklin Roosevelt did and lay down the law and say, you know, America didn't want to fight World War II. I mean, if you, you know, polls, but they didn't but have can polls. Can you do that now? That, now he's uh, been I, before the American people so many times we've, in the last we've few had weeks. The, we've had chats in prime time. We've uh, had, my goodness. Uh, what is he going to do? Look, come back and listen, say I was wrong the first five times? President Obama is a very effective speaker. If this is the crisis that we think it is, he is it's imperative to him to go before the American people and, and say, we have to stop them and we have to do yeah, this right. Why has Rachel, I actually that? agree with President Obama. I don't think that we should be putting U.S. boots on the ground, and I hope he does remain firm on that. I don't think the American people are saying we want boots on the ground. I think the American people are saying what John Boehner is saying, who people accuse of not being such a great communicator. In this case, he has absolutely channeled the voice of the American people, but which is they are barbarians and they need to be dealt with. And they're not saying, the American people aren't saying we want boots on the ground. What they're saying is fix this, get rid of them, destroy them. But That's whatever. what they're saying. Yeah, whatever it takes. And the fact that they don't want another war when we pull them, mm -hmm. the fact that they say that and they still say almost 50 percent, we yeah. don't mind if there's boots on the ground, means they really want something done. They, they know that this is serious, and the president is not taking it seriously. 72% believe that U.S. ground troops will be deployed. That means that 72% of this country thinks the president is not telling them the truth. Well, that's logical. And that, he has been out there repeatedly saying this is not a possibility. So I don't care how effective of a speaker well, he is, and I, I think he is an effective speaker. I think that's But the buck stops here. But People I, are tired. They I feel think, like they're being lied to I at think this the, point. You know, polling questions are weird, as you know. They're, they're kind of, it, it, they're, they're mm -hmm. somewhat amorphous, right? They don't really get to feelings. I think that's logic. I think American people. People saying, of course, we want to get rid of them. We got to get rid of them. Dollars to donuts. A lot of people don't want another they war. They don't believe but, them. But if this is the terrorist group that could come over here, if, yeah. if all that stuff is real, 
he should go before the American people and say, we have to fight this. Well, I think well, they but he has a credibility right. problem. Maybe, maybe and, and this is being very optimistic, but it's certainly possible, maybe through that polling that Jedediah just talked about, what that represents is the American people giving the president the benefit of the doubt, which is saying, look, if you think you need to go in there and do That's this... Right. We support you to do that. Well, he's got I mean, that's, that could I be think that the American the people seize the threat. They see Americans being beheaded, right. and they say there's no way that the coalition and the campaign we've put together can, can defeat a yeah. right. threat like this. His base, but, right. his base but how can we? But I think they believe <laughs> President Obama when he says he doesn't how, want How groups. can they defeat this when we have a president who's also saying that beheadings are workplace violence? All right. Mm -hmm. We are awaiting the Israeli Prime Minister's big speech at the UN. You will see it live right here when it happens. It's expected to be very fiery. Plus, did you catch it during the big game? the NFL's big PR move to improve its image in the wake of its domestic violence scandals, yes, plural. So will it really change the minds of its fans? And do they really care? And could keeping track of your vacation days become a thing of the past? The push for unlimited vacay in the workplace, imagine that, and why some say that it may not be as good as it sounds.